and always the rule is if it is an elderly patient without any episode of pancreatitis it is unlikely to have the cystic you know carcinoma because pancreatitis history is the only thing that the, the patient will be carrying 49 year old perforated duodenal ulcer with a long term history of peptic ulcer disease long term means some definitive treatment should be done hence we need to do anthrectomy truncal vagotomy remove all the secretory acid secreting part of the stomach that's how you basically manage ha earlier days there were wonderful days by 200th question you throw it out and go home and eat well and sleep but now we need to drag do we need to or you can carry on with the explanatory booklet no sir every rupee which we paid must be meaningfully valued so straight we will take the objection round if you all agree because it is already 215 only we are supposed to fight till 3 no uh will go little more faster what is motor neuron disease upper limbs lmn features lower limbs umn features umn is spasticity lmn is wasting combination is motor neuron disease shock wave diatheremy physiotherapists will put some electrical shock and your pain is relieved we get it in back pain osteoarthritis and sprain recurrent club foot lateral compartment muscles peroneal muscle problem ankylosing spondylitis ivds calcification is a very important associated feature now all of them can be used in anesthesia very silly question right now uh, i know probably we part of asking which is used in analgesia uh, okay now eyeball movement is lost which stage you call it as stage 3 plane 1 in stage asthmaticus we use ketamine which has a bronchodilating ability in renal tv there will be hydrocalysis typically without pelvic dilatation if there is pelvic dilatation then it is an unlikely feature of the renal tuberculosis probably those hydrocalysis are because of some other reason like ureteral pelvic uh, junction fibrosis congenitally which occur that need to be implicated now bladder wall calcification if it is there think of cystosomy acids which can lead to this kind of a bladder wall calcification hemodialysis the patient is on now develop cis what is that entity called dialysis associated renal cystic disease which is acquired now comes the gynops 20 out of 20 you are going to make it because there is nothing unpredictable about gynops it is like a marriage lived for 20 years so there is nothing unpredictability if still unpredictability is there it is not worth living 20 years in that kind of a marriage so gynap should be a predictable performance without any surprises for that matter all two for equations are going to be like that so alpha fetoprotein if it is elevated think of neural tube defects all diameters mento vertical sub occipito bregmatic diagonal conjugate taylor made obstetrics you must be ready So nine centimeters is the lowest biparietal. Abrupt show placenta. Placenta got suddenly detached from uterine wall, leading to abrupt show placenta. Abnormal implantation leads to placenta previa. Now, multiple pregnancy. When can you detect? Between eighth to tenth week of uh, gestation earliest. chronic hypertension can be a predisposing factor for the eclampsia of pregnancy by convenient uterus generally doesn't bother only when the women want to conceive it can lead to habitual abortions then that becomes an indication for surgically correcting it it is idiopathic cause most likely responsible 
for the precocious puberty. Proteinuria edema <coughs> with hypertension makes it preeclampsia of pregnancy. The uterus corpus to cervix ratio differs at different ages of reproductive life. Typically, uh, it is normally in a reproductively uh, uh, post pubertal female is uh, 2 is to 1. Now, endometrial tissue, if you remove in a metrorrhagia patient, what will you typically come across? Uh, is it adenomatous hyperplasia or atrophy? What is more likely? Uh, in a patient of metrorrhagia metrorrhagia entropathica with uh, yeah I think this needs some uh, change now IUD when do you want to insert it uh, during lactation you need to exclude the pregnancy 6 to 8 weeks after the delivery is the right time for inserting of the IUD in a reproductively aged female, it is between 4 to 6 days of the menses is the right time. Now when you want to do curettage for the endometrial biopsy, a histology, to know whether there is any anovulation or ovulation is happening normally. The best time is one week preceding the menstruation where if you take an endometrial curettage, you must be able to identify secretory changes. Secretory changes are there means progesterone is there, which means ovulation happened, which produced corpus luteum, which is producing the progesterone, which is leading to secretory changes, which are detected by your endometrial sampling 4 to 5 days before menstruation. Now, uh, all the remaining drugs can lead to galactoria. So, you know what is the pathophysiology of galactoria, how do you manage etc. Cryptomenorrhea, how do you define? There is an uh, obstruction with an atritic hymen which is preventing the discharge of the menstrual blood which lead to decreased volume or rather unexpressed volume of the menstrual bleed which defines the cryptomenorrhea. Before puberty why trichobunas does not develop? Basically after puberty there is an estrogen which will provide a favorable environment and a required pH for the growth of the bacteria which does not exist before puberty. Hence it is more often seen in the sexually active young reproductive female. Now adenogenital syndrome. It is the 17 ketosteroid levels measurement is one of the ways by which prenatally you can be able to identify congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Staph aureus, purpural mastoides, the most common organism. Testicular feminization, what do you know about it doctor? XY karyotype. Testosterone is produced but unable to act on the receptors. All this testosterone produced in this XY karyotype guy converts into estrogen and that estrogen will go and lead to breast formation. Until estrogen is there breast will form doctor, simple rule. Why liver failure patients even if they are men that lead to gynecomastia? Liver metabolizes estrogen. If it is not there, estrogen is excess. Excess estrogen lead to breast formation. Hence, breast is normal. Because of the breast, they will be confused for females. But uh, what happened to their testis? Because they are XY karyotype, no? Testis won't descend. Because for the testicular distance also, you require testosterone to act on receptors. Problem in... Uh, Feminizing androgen insensitivity syndrome is testosterone cannot act on receptors. Hence, the testis remains in the inguinal canal like an undescended testis which is not found outside. 
since testis is not found breast is there they will be confused as females but if you do karyotyping you will find xy instead of xx that defines the androgen insensitivity syndrome who present with female phenotype a short blind ending vagina undescended testis presenting like an inguinal mass and the breast well developed because of the testosterone converting into estrogen is called as testicular feminization syndrome we don't use estrogen to treat endometriosis estrogen promotes endometriosis androgens inhibit endometriosis is what need to be remembered hemolytic uremic syndrome there is no aso title what do you have microangiopathic hemolytic anemia with thrombocytopenia anemia and a respiratory infection is what you come across hirschsprung and uh, acquired megacolon how do you differentiate symptoms right from the birth defines congenital megacolon where there are stools in ampulla uh, would indicate congenital megacolon whereas the stools in the ampulla would be seen in the acquired megacolon which is a differentiating factor between the two goitrous but u thyroid normal puberty but mental retardation with deaf mutism with pyramidal signs they are all the features of endemic cretinism is what you are going to remember now never you see goiter at birth if it is congenital hypothyroidism which is due to iodinase peroxidase or some enzymes which are required for thyroxin production if they are congenitally absent it lead to hypothyroidism congenitally but they won't have the goiter if the goiter is there it is not congenital hypothyroidism the rule which need to be remembered now infantile myoclonic seizures how do you basically treat we treat with acdh and prednisolone they can recur several times and they lead to hypsarithmic pattern on eeg which are all the classical features lennox gestalt syndrome it lead to a characteristic spike wave pattern but when the patient is awake not when he is asleep is what need to be remembered 